All right, welcome back, everybody. A little bit more of the cartoon coach here. We're going to be working on our Princess Mononoke uh, drawing. Now, let's get right into my favorite part of drawing, which is always the face, the most expressive part. Now, we had the, the, the circle created the head, and we had the chin. You've seen that in some of the other um, videos that I've done. What we're going to do here is I'm going to kind of flesh out the shape of the head. So I follow that top circle, which turns into the chin. It's got a little bit of a dip here below the eye where the cheek starts. Hopefully you can see that. It goes right up to the ear. When I was doing the clothing, I wanted to show you the earrings before. I forgot to do that. So she's got these big oval earrings, one on each side. Okay, let's get back to it. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to flesh in where that nose goes. So an anime nose is usually just a little bit of a triangle that's in there. Um, I like to throw in a little bit of dimension to my nose and get in that, just the side of the nose there to give a little nostril. She's very upset most of the time. And maybe that's a bit of a big mouth for her. So I'll just make it a little bit smaller. And in this case, maybe actually a little bit too far over since her nose is coming here into her chin. Let's, let's make that point a little bit there. That's a little bit better. Remember, you have erasers, and you're, it's more than normal for you to use them uh, when you're not happy with something, and it's better to do it if you can recognize it right at the beginning. I'm not happy with the opening on the mouth, so let's try that one more time. All right, so she's ready to go. Next, we're gonna get in those eyebrows. I'm gonna put a little furl in her eyebrow and one on this side as well. And we're gonna put in her pupils right away. Now the pupils, these are important. You wanna have them pointing in the same direction. Um, it's very easy to have them pointing off. Look, I even have one pointing off right now. Let's get that fixed right away. First off, the the outside of the eye is right here. You need to know where that is. And there we go. Now it's important that they're both looking in the same direction. If they're not looking in the same direction, your character is going to look uh, like perhaps they've got some sort of a, they've been hit in the head or something like that. And do the eyelashes in here. Princess Mononoke seems to have quite a bit of uh, eye makeup in there. These big thick eyelashes. Makes her look real feminine. You can fill in the eyes. And then of course she's got those triangles coming down. And then one here on her forehead. Okay, so I'm happy with that to start. Let's throw in her neck. It's right there. And of course the inside of her ear, which is, we, I've gone over that before in a previous tutorial, where it's just, you just want to show the opening by doing a, this kind of shape. And that works. Next we got the neck that went in. And we have our shoulders here. Now here's an important thing I want to show you. These lines make everything, especially when you're drawing a woman. Um, the shoulders are connected by this, this line that comes in. It's, it's called a sternum. And if you just draw in a very faint line where that sternum is, like this, it's almost like they connect here at the center of the chest. You, you really get that, that feeling. That touch, touch your, your, your below your neck right there. You're going to feel that bone. And, and that is a, a piece of the drawing that should absolutely be there. We get the shoulder in. Now let's create these, these pipes for the arms, these pipes that come down. Now, Mononoke is quite a muscular princess. She's no uh, Disney princess, that's for sure. Um, so we like to draw her as such. I mean, she lives in the woods among the wolves. She's going to have some muscle with her. So you just create a bit of a muscle and, you know, look at your own arm. Even if you don't have a lot of muscle on your arm, you could still see the shape that's there and exaggerate it a little bit for, for her arm. And there we go. And then that comes in there. 
Next we'll do the other shoulder. Now even if the shoulder is going to be hidden by this piece of clothing here, I still want to get it in there because I want my drawing to be correct. And it's very easy to get it, um, it looks like the arm is coming off of nothing uh, because you didn't include the shoulder that attached it to the body. Like you might miss this armpit area here and, and that's important to have in there. Um, you know, you don't have to have great knowledge of anatomy to to be able to draw these these characters properly, uh, but it doesn't hurt to look at uh, other drawing books. Uh, you can look up books by Tom Bancroft. You can look up books by Ben Caldwell. Um, even Reg Hart books have quite a bit in it that are, are very good, although I would recommend those for younger uh, students. Uh, but definitely Tom Bancroft, if you can find his books, Character Mentor and um, and as well uh, Creating Characters with Personality. Uh, I'm going to go over hands another time. Um, right now I'm just going to flesh the hands in. Um, and if you can follow along with what I'm doing, then that's that's wonderful. Hands are, are, are a tough one uh, for a lot of you. And like I said, I still sometimes have to work them out. I'm happy with that. Just her raising her fist. Ah, she's ready to fight, so that's good. Uh, I put this hand up a little bit too high earlier. You can see by the, the proportion, right? I don't want to go too much higher than this with the wrist. I don't want her to have a giant hand either. So I'm going to actually take that all out of there. And I'm going to create the hand off of here. Hands are essentially boxes or wedges. I saw an online tutorial just recently where someone described them as wedges. I really like that. They're totally these wedges um, with these sausages that come off of them. It's as simple as that. And if you can wrap your mind around drawing hands, um, you're going to be able to draw anything you want. Um, they are literally the most complicated part of the human body. There's more bones in the hand than any other part of your body. I'm not sure if the, the foot is up there with the amount of bones, but um, I know that hands are way more difficult to draw than any other part of the body in any perspective. So I'm much happier with that. She still has a bit of a big hand, but we can correct that in the next step. That's good for now. Um, she has some dimension here coming down. Now the, the legs, just the same as the arms. I mean, we already created these, these shapes in here, but now we're going to kind of define them a little bit further. And, uh, and again, you know, a, a good idea to do, I'm, I'm saying it again, but I haven't mentioned this before. Uh, a good idea to do is uh, get yourself a, a, you know, a full length mirror that you can put on your door, on the back of your door. And when you're drawing, go and stand in this pose and see what happens with your muscles and see you know, what kind of, of positions they take, you know. Uh, I'm going to flesh out a little bit of the clothing now as we go through here. Now, these aren't pirate boots. These are like these, it's almost like what happens to uh, like Uggs after a little while. You see people who are wearing these, these Uggs that really they probably should have replaced and thrown out a long time ago. And it just becomes all like weak and it's falling apart. Um, her boots are kind of like that and maybe that's where they got this the idea for Uggs I don't know uh, but generally um, when you're drawing this this character um, when you can see her boots in the movie uh, they're just kind of floppy and these might even be a little bit too big uh, but they're just this these kind of floppy things so we've got that going now let's get let's get her hair done I'm just gonna sharpen my pencil here I've mentioned this before, these sharpeners here are awesome. Uh, you can get them for about three bucks at any art store. They're really great. So the next thing we're gonna do is let's get this uh, necklace going. Um, it's a bit of a lesson in perspective in a tiny, tiny way um, because you, you need to be able to see the necklace cord as it goes through these teeth, I imagine they are. And to do that, you have this, so if this is the shape of the, of the necklace tooth, you basically want to create this kind of hole in it for the necklace to go through. Um, little details that kind of make 
you know, the final drawing when everything is together. And, and again, when you go in with your graphite pencil, you're going to flesh that out a little bit. Like that. Okay. And there, I, I did the first one a little bit long. You can do like a little line like this just to make sure they're all the same length. And then what I'm going to do is uh, get that shoulder piece in there from the from the outfit that she's wearing, that big giant wolf shawl. Oh, and I said I was going to get her hair done. Okay, so her hair. First thing, let, let's get the bandana going. And it's like a medallion with like a circle in the center. And then the bandana is kind of attached by these little arrowheads here. And they finish off there. And then we can just do a little line right to the end. And if you want to fill that in. Sometimes I like to fill them in, it makes me happier as I'm drawing. And then for the hair, when people are doing this type of hair, there's many different ways to do it. Uh, I prefer a softer feel to things. So, you know, perhaps in the movie, they're more, you know, rigid lines or, or whatever. I personally prefer doing some soft ones, a couple of, of, of pointy ones, but it, it just makes me feel like... Um, like the character is not evil or or whatever and and certainly princess mononoke is not evil she's got these little sideburn triangles there this part of her hair is kind of flying in the, in the wind because of the pose that we've got going and um and it's got to kind of be in front of her clothing but behind her neck so that will do for that and then on the other side same thing but not quite so dramatic because she's moving in this direction she's going this way so you don't want to call too much attention to uh, to those those parts of course her earrings are there and her hair is almost done we're gonna take this see how they meet up with the circle we're gonna take that line this is actually the line from the face if you remember from earlier and carry it up to the head. Now we know where the part in her hair is. It's very important, believe it or not, to have the part in the right place. Your character will look weird if you put the part in the wrong place, and especially if you're drawing someone else's character. I draw in a different style, but you're still going to be able to tell that this is Princess Mononoke. She has an armband here. And then let's finish off the, uh, the wolf shawl that she's got. And just like with her hair, I'm trying not to have too many pointy pieces. I'd rather um, make this just a bit softer. She already looks angry enough. She doesn't need to look like an evil character with all sorts of pointy uh, bits. So that works. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to finish off this... this uh, She's got like a dress. So remember I said that this, this first piece here is an apron. And everything she's wearing is kind of in tatters. So let's bring this apron piece down. And, um, and give it a couple of little basic rips in it. I don't want it to take away from the dress too much. So I'm not going to put too many. And give it maybe a wrinkle around the, the waist would be nice. And then I'm going to have it come in, in the back, because it's on both sides of her body, following those wrinkles, and then I'm going to give it some shape above the dress. Maybe it goes even this far. And I'm going to fill that in now, just, just so I don't confuse it with, with the dress when I'm drawing it in. So you can see she's moving this way, and the her apron is kind of swaying backwards. It's going the opposite way. So we're starting to really create force in our character. She's moving this way and her clothing is, is going to take a little while before it follow, catches up with her um, and gets over to the other side. So I'm going to draw in the dress now. And again, when I get into my graphite pencil, I'm going to even add a little bit more detail. Very subtle stuff, but it's going to add with all that force and, and all the feeling and all the wrinkles and, and everything. Now, again, this is all tatters too. And this is a fun part because you can't really do this wrong. You can, like rips are kind of an organic thing. And when I say organic, I mean it's not a defined shape by any conventional means. It's not, 
you know, so a muscle has to be the shape of a muscle, although it is an organic shape, it's a human being, a muscle is the shape of a muscle, whereas something that's been ripped, I mean, you can't really determine how that's going to look until it's been ripped. So as an artist, you kind of get to decide what that's going to look like. You can even have little pieces coming off of it if you want. Um, and that really helps. So what I've done is I've created some, some very basic rips um, that I'm happy with. And then again, with the graphite pencil, I'm going to go in and detail them a little more. This is a bit of the back of the skirt as it comes down. I'm twinning here. See, look at this. I'm twinning right there. Don't like that. So let's give it a different rip. Easy to spot that stuff. Okay. And then, of course, I've got the uh, that furry shawl coming up. I could decide to just keep it behind. Um, I had made a decision before teaching this tutorial that I was going to have it come out there. Uh, that will only really probably make a difference when there's color down the road, but I think I'm happy with it kind of just ending off behind the dress. So I think I'm going to keep it that way. She has another armband here. And I'm just going to flesh out this hand at the top and then we're going to take a break and I think we're ready to hit our graphite pencil and clean up this drawing. I think, I think we're almost there. There's another thing I want to mention to you before I move on. Here's a decision I'm going to make to change right now. The shawl comes along this way and look where I've drawn this, this armband. Right in the same line as the shawl. That's not a good thing to happen. What that's going to look like is it's going to look like you're cutting her arm. Um, and it's it's just an optical illusion that happens and there's a couple of different things you can do to kind of solve it now I can't really move where her armband is going to be Unfortunately, but I can decide that the shawl sticks out maybe here And I think that that's going to be the best decision and that's all drawing is is a bunch of decisions that you're making That will end up with an aesthetic uh, drawing in the end a nice a nice piece that you're going to be proud to show your family. Right? Right. Her arm is still a little bit long here, but I'm going to continue with the drawing as it is. I would normally correct that, but I want to keep moving. Before I continue with the graphite pencil, I'd mentioned that I wanted to fix her, her hand at the top. So let's do that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by getting the hilt of this knife. The hilt is the back piece of it. Uh, very often they're decorated quite well. And then her hand follows through this way. Comes through and we have the thumb. There's the inside of the hand. Inside knuckles. And then we have the baby finger. And then the other fingers follow suit, and that will do, donkey. That's a Shrek reference. And let's get that knife in there. And you know what? It's got these little arrows that go the opposite way of the knife. Whoops, opposite way of the knife. I'm doing it the same way as the knife. Here we go. Like that. Pointing towards the hand. All right. Now let's continue with our graphite pencil. Graphite pencils are great. You want to get yourself a nice soft one for when you're finishing out a drawing. Um, they go HB, are the, if you go into the H's, they're the hardest, the B's are the softest, HB is right in between. So I like to go to between a 2B and a 4B. Uh, today I'm going to be using a 4B just because it's going to show up a lot darker as I go quickly on, on the camera. Uh, before I do this, <laughs> I know I keep stopping like that and doing stuff, but I do that when I draw. I'm going to take these, um, her makeup, the arrow, the, uh, the red marks on her face, and I'm going to, I have a red pencil, so I'm going to use it. It makes me more excited to draw this drawing when they're in there. Love it. There they are. All right. 